Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment, like and share the program so that your friends can join in the conversation. Now, also, if you haven't already done so, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. And in both cases, make sure you hit the notification button so that you can be alerted as soon as these videos go live and you can participate in the live chat as the program is going on. Also want to encourage you, if you haven't already done so, please make sure to visit fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. It is the place to go to find all sorts of cool pro 2a swag i'm talking t-shirts coffee mugs hoodies you name it they're all right there at fpcgear.com the best part about it is every dollar that you spend goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms so you can support the second amendment and you can look good doing it that's fpcgear.com all right moving right along so you guys all know we've been covering this now for has to be ever since the program has started kind of the how shall we say the corporate war on on our fundamental right to keep and bear arms how there seems to be companies whether they are banks or finance companies or internet companies or now in this case clothing companies that are going out of their way in order to seem socially responsible in order to fight to take away or get, or, or contributing to to the to fight to take away our right to keep and bear arms one such company is Levi Strauss. Now, you guys might remember they contribute. They 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 uh, committed to putting uh, well a large sum of money uh, up against or into organizations uh, like Everytown that are seeking or Moms Demand Action that are seeking to take away our fundamental right to keep and bear arms. Well, there was an article uh, not too long ago in Breitbart where they were talking about this very fundamental thing because what a lot of people don't realize is well. Let's just be honest. These corporations represent shareholders. And those shareholders, well, they kind of have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that they take care of those shareholders. And clearly, they are not. As was pointed out by my good friend, Mr. David Almasi, over at the National Center for Policy Research, uh, who's with us today to talk a little bit about Levi Strauss and, uh, and their anti-gun policies. Uh, David, how are you doing today? Doing great, Craig. Thanks for having us on. Excellent. Excellent. So um, do me a favor and share with our audience kind of your perspective, what you see in regards to this policy and what Levi Strauss is doing with their uh, investment policy. Sure. The National Center has a group called the Free Enterprise Project, and it's the goal of the Free Enterprise Project to keep corporations true to the free market principles that made them great. And as such, we visit a lot of these uh, publicly traded companies during shareholder season and bring up salient questions. Usually, sometimes it's a pat on the back. A lot of times, especially including this case with Levi Strauss, was to point out where they have strayed and where we would like them to go in order to keep up with the, uh, the free market. And in this case, it was their gun policy. They have a, uh, even though their job is making clothes, they are giving a significant amount of money, at least a million dollars, to um, their own Safer Tomorrow Fund that will then be sent out to groups like, as you said, Every Town for Gun Safety and other groups related to um, uh, Michael Bloomberg and things like that. But they're also letting their um, employees do volunteer work on company time for the issue of um, taking away guns. And so we, what we did at the National Center through the Free Enterprise Project was we commissioned a poll of people nationwide to find out what their views would be about Levi Strauss had they known uh, when, when they knew about the, uh, the gun policy. And we started out asking the question, what, what do you think about Levi Strauss? Iconic uh, American jeans maker, what are your opinions? 89% said favorable. But then when we followed up saying, hey, do you know that they're actually campaigning against the Second Amendment? Do you know that they're giving money to groups and allowing their employees to go do things that will compromise your ability to own and uh, keep guns? And it fell from 89% favorability to 63% favorability. That's wow. a huge loss. Yes. And then the follow-up question was, does this affect your ideas about buying from Levi's in the future. If you have, if you needed jeans, are you going to go to Levi's or are you going to go to Wrangler or something else? 
And again, 63% said that they would consider buying their jeans elsewhere in the future. And this also includes dockers, this includes uh, denizen clothing. Across the board, this is a significant hit to the reputation of the company. And that's what we brought up at the meeting. Well, you know, it, it's interesting you say that because I've, you know, I've found myself uh, before this, but especially after I saw this article even more, it's like I started to notice that there were items that I, I, I'm in the store. And when I'm thinking if I have an alternative between uh, a product being sold by someone who, who's fighting against my rights and someone who's not, I, I have an option. And so I've literally, I'm telling you, I've literally put this into practice I made a decision to buy this instead of this. Now you can't always do that, but when you can, I to me it's vitally important that you do. But but getting back, and one of the things I wanted to ask you about was now help people understand. You know, when these corporate, the, first of all, these corporate officers, they're not the owners of the company. That's not like a private, a, a, a sole proprietorship where you know they're the only ones affected. Um, these people are are, are are put in place and hired. They're supposed to have a fiduciary responsibility. How does such a policy affect their fiduciary responsibility? Well, one of the things you could say about Levi's is they just went public. They they were a public company back in the eighty up until the eighties. They bought their shares back and went private. They just went public again this year, which means they just issued stock that investors could buy to get a stake in the company. And that's what the National Center did. The Free Enterprise Project has shares in Levi Strauss, which allows us to be, well, makes us investors and allows us to have a say. Um, and now before we get even further, I'll just mention, there's a lot of conservative companies that people complain about, the, the, the left complains about, Coke Industries, um, Hobby Lobby, um, Chick-fil-A, those are all private companies. So it's a whole different ball game. This, these are companies that we're actually, that that the public can invest in and as such can address their concerns or their praise to the corporate leadership. And that's what happened. We went to the, the first shareholder meeting of the newly public Levi's was held um, about a month ago today in San Francisco at their corporate headquarters. And that's where we, we brought this up. And, and when I said earlier, I mean, this was a corporate culture that they had before they went public, but it's a corporate culture that is going to hurt investment in the company and that's why we brought it up right and that's that's the thing and, and once again if you're investing in a company you you need to know that there's a chance that your investment is now going to be hurt you're not going to exactly. your earnings are going to be hurt because they're taking a policy that is well that is unpopular with probably a, a significant percentage of their of their potential customer base. Exactly, I mean, you've got, uh, they've got three real big divisions. There's the, the jeans division, there's the dockers, which is the khakis, and then there's the denizen clothing, which goes to the younger people. And in our poll, I said 63% um, said they had a problem that, that their, their image of the company was affected on by it. In the Midwest, it was 75% said that they had less interest in buying their clothes. Um, in the South, it was 59%. Uh, it, it was almost 50% or more among every demographic, and that includes millennials, that includes Gen X. And among the baby boomers, it was over 71% um, said that they were not interested in buying Levi's anymore after hearing about the, the, the gun policy. So it's certainly something, as you said before, when you have so many options out there to buy for denim or for khakis or for other things, you need to watch the market. And one of the things I brought up when I was at the meeting is the denim market, the clothing market actually in general, is not the most, it's a very tight market these days. Yeah. And so putting yourself out there and making yourself distinctive in that way, especially when denim is something the blue collar uh, crowd is, is clamoring for, you are putting yourselves in a danger zone. Mm. Now, are you seeing in the work that you're doing? Are you seeing a uh, a greater increase in the in in companies that are taking quote unquote are taking political stands on on hot button issues? Absolutely, it's it's amazing how um, the corporate sector is becoming the muscle for the political left, 
And my colleague, Justin Danhoff, talks about it from a perspective of it's um, top down where the executive C-suite people are already of a mindset where they can accept this. It's bottom up in that the talent within the company, especially the millennial talent that doesn't really have um, the dedication to a company that they used to have, that that's a factor. And then there's the outside in. There's the outside pressure groups, like let's say the Human Rights Campaign, the um, Southern Poverty Law Center, the um, Every Town for Gun Safety, groups from the outside that are pressuring these companies to make a position on LGBTQ, LMNOP issues, on gun issues, on trade issues. Well, trade issues is actually a part of the company, but they're asking them to make more decisions and I and stands outside of their real corporate purview. And as such, it's putting it's putting us at risk as conservatives and it's putting gun owners at risk and it's it's putting their profits at risk when we when there's the inevitable backlash and companies have right. to answer for their political stands. Well, exactly. And it, it and it goes to the it goes to the other side as well. When you have companies that do stand up or do take a stand for something that we agree on. Uh, they oftentimes will face a backlash from for people who disagree. I, I for one, believe this. I'm like, look, you know what? You're, you're a corporation. If you provide me jeans or clothes, <laughs> just just make my clothes. I, yeah. I believe the same thing about athletes and entertainers. If if I went to see you sing, just shut up and sing. If I went to if I'm going to you know watch a, a sporting event, I'm not interested in politics and my sports. Any, by the way, any more that I'm interested in listening to a politician comment to me or tell me about, about sports. I'm not interested in watching politicians play basketball. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to so hear basketball players talking to me about guns. Um, well, there's an idea among the corporate uh, culture right now that they're looking at millennial customers. They're looking, in the case of Nike, they're looking at the sneakerheads who – will go out and buy the $200 sneakers. And they're thinking that if they offend the people who like the Betsy Ross shoe, um, didn't support Colin Kaepernick's stand against it, that it doesn't matter. They're not gonna be buying the Colin Kaepernick signature shoe or something like that. And so they marginalize that segment of the population. But what I don't think they realize is that conservative customers, the people who were offended by the Betsy Ross shoe thing, they're not going to buy Nike stuff ever again. They will go to Adidas. They will go to Under Armour, although I have problems with Under Armour, and they will go to other places. They'll go to Walmart and buy the Walmart brand shoe. And at some point in time, Nike may slip up. They may have a Me Too moment. They may say, their executive may say something wrong. The other competition might sign the hot new athletic prospect and all the people, all the millennial types will run to that other company or go to some other company and get their shoes. And the conservatives are already gone. So Nike will have put themselves in a situation where they have no customers now. Well, these companies need to be neutral in their politics. Well, no, I, I com- yeah, I completely agree because when what they, a lot of them don't realize is those millennials who, who like their stuff and buy their stuff, uh, it, a lot of times it's the conservative parents who are the ones who are paying the bill. Good point. Yeah, the, the, in, it, just the market's fickle. And right. they need to, these people need to realize. Another good example is Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, last year after uh, Sandy Hook, or not after Sandy Hook, after uh, Parkland, they uh, went and took certain amounts, certain guns and accessories out of their, line, their, their stores. And they... Um, up the age to buy a gun to 21, which is, of course, well above the age to be able to serve in the military and carry a weapon. Um, And they also actually even put money into lobbying efforts against guns. Now, this is crazy for Dix because not only does Dix sell guns in the regular sporting goods store, but they also have um, an additional chain called Field and Stream, which is hunting and camping. So I went to the meeting and brought this up and had a back and forth, a private back and forth with the CEO after the meeting and telling them that they're, they're cutting their legs off in the fact that they're not only are they going to lose the people that were going to buy guns, no one's going to want to buy a gun at Dick's anymore, but they're 
not going to buy golf clubs. They're not going to buy soccer balls. They're not going to buy the hunting and camping equipment at any of the stores. And as a result, I mean, I got dismissed at the time. And mm -hmm. the CEO actually told me he didn't care if I didn't go to his store anymore. Uh, but they lost $150 million over the yeah. course of the last year. They're just starting to, to claw out of it. But I would say that they're probably still at risk of losing the field and stream chain because if you have a choice to buy anything in the sporting goods category, let alone guns, a person who is a strong Second Amendment advocate or just a friend of the Constitution or been told by one of their friends, they're going to go someplace else. At my mm -hmm. shopping area, the Dicks is there, but there's a Moe's across the street. There's a Walmart in the area. And of course, right. I can always go home and go on to Amazon. So well, they're, exactly. they're killing themselves. It, well, exactly. And, and unfortunately, you know, I think not enough people. I mean, it, the biggest challenge we have is, is it seems like more and more there are more and more companies. If I were to boycott every single company that, that did or said something that I was opposed to, I, I don't know where I would buy. I don't know where I would buy or be able to do anything. But I do know that when I can find an opportunity, like I said, to, to do something different. This company, Company A, uh, is fighting against my right to keep and bear arms, and Company B either supports my right to keep and bear arms, which would be great, or at the very least is not working against my right to keep and bear arms. If I got an option, I'm going with Company B. Yeah, I mean, in the, the soda area, I mean, like Coke and Pepsi, both equally bad politically, but we've tried to work with both companies over the years to bring them to a more neutral political stance. And in some cases, I think they've Pepsi recently um, signed on to our proposal that they would look for um, board members that have a diverse mm -hmm. political background. Right. And so I mean, that may bring some more ideas into the boardroom that haven't been heard before. And maybe you will see a more moderation of the company. But we don't even ask for a company to change their politics. They can, I mean, the board can believe what they want. They can, they can do anything. They can have all the beliefs that they want. We just want them to be politically neutral. We right. don't want them to be able to put themselves at risk by jumping into some liberal policy that they think is gonna, gonna help them out. But in many respects, it's gonna actually hurt them. Like we talked about Dick's, we talked about Levi's, which is having a, their stock went from $22 a share to it's currently $16 a share since that uh, shareholder meeting. And that's because of the, the tight clothing market has um, forced people to make choices. And I'm not saying that, that my concerns were the reason why they're doing poorly. I'll be happy to have people give me credit for it, but they are putting themselves, they have put themselves in a situation where people are making choices and undoubtedly, the liberal viewpoints that come out of the Levi's company, whether it be the environment, um, whether it be their LGBTQ and LMNOP, whether all the other policies that they sign on to, I think people are going away from Levi's because of that reason. And they'll go to places like Wrangler. They'll go to Walmart. They'll go. I think that they end up are, they're selling more jeans at Costco now than they're selling um, than Levi's is selling. So they have, they have competition that they need to be aware of mindful of and, res and respectful of people's political views because that is going to come back and hurt them exactly exactly so hey do me a favor uh before we let you go uh tell our folks a little bit about uh the national center for policy research and how they can follow your work first of all they can go to our website which is www.nationalcenter.org nationalcenter.org and you can see our our two main programs are the free enterprise project which is what we've been talking about today where we Try to hold companies to their uh, their free market principles, and then also we have Project Twenty One, which is a conservative group for African Americans. We try to um, give the political diversity of the African American community um, a leg up, and so we we have a lot of people that uh, are willing to speak out on issues. They were talking about uh, uh, we have a thing called the Blueprint for a Better Deal for Black America, which goes across ten different policy areas immigration, criminal justice reform, uh, voting rights, things like that, and offer conservative solutions to those ideas. Well, sir, thank you so very much. We very much appreciate you coming on the program. And, uh, you know, thank you for the work that you do. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to have you on in the future. Anytime. Thank you very much. All right. You take care. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that is Mr. David Al Masi with the uh, National Center for Public Policy Research. All right, folks. Well, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in. We appreciate you liking and sharing this program and telling your friends about the Farmers Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Remember, got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.